video I'm going to show you how to simplify ratios. So it's very similar to simplifying fractions in that we're trying to identify the highest common factor in the numbers given. So in the top question, the highest common factor, so the biggest number that fits exactly into both 21 and 28, it is 7. So that means we have to divide both of those numbers by the number 7. So if I divide 21 by 7, I get 3. And if I divide 28 by 7, I get 4. So that's it, we've simplified the first ratio. On the next one, the highest common factor is 5. So 5 is the biggest number that fits exactly into both of these. So I'm going to divide by that number 5. So 35 divided by 5 is 7. And 55 divided by 5 is 11. Don't worry if you can't find the highest common factor. It just means that you might sometimes have to simplify more than one time until you can't simplify anymore. Just like when you're simplifying fractions. In this one here, the highest common factor is 12. So I'm going to divide both of them by 12. 24 divided by 12 is just 2. And 12 divided by 12 is 1. All right, now, on this one here, we have decimals. We're not allowed to have decimals in the ratios. So to get rid of the decimals in this question here, I must multiply by 100. Well, if I times this one by 100, it definitely gets rid of the decimal. But because I've got two numbers after the decimal here, I have to multiply it by 100 to get rid of both of them because the decimal point moves two places. So when I multiply this one by 100, I get 50. And this one over here, I get 125. So once you've done that, don't forget you need to simplify, just like in the previous questions. So look for the highest common factor. The highest common factor in this one is 25. So I need to divide both of those numbers by the number 25. So 50 divided by 25 is just 2. And 125 divided by 25 is 5. So there we go. And I'm going to do exactly the same on the next one. I need to get rid of the decimal numbers. So in this one, because there's only one number after the decimal point in both of those, I only need to multiply by 10. So if I multiply this number by 10, I get 12, okay, because the decimal point moves one place. And if I multiply this one by 10, I get 36. So the highest common factor in these two numbers is the number 12. So I'm dividing by 12. And 12 divided by 12 gives me 1. And 36 divided by 12 gives me 3. So there we go. There's simplifying ratios. It's just like simplifying fractions. So just before I go on to the next ones, I just want to show you a little trick. So if you've got your calculator, okay, most of these calculators, when you divide these numbers, or when you divide numbers, it will give the answer as a fraction on your calculator. So if you've got your calculator handy, you can try it on yours now. If you type in 21 divided by 28 on the calculator, it will give you three quarters. So it will show you on the calculator screen, three over four. Well, look over here. The ratio is three to four. So it's the same numbers given in the fraction, okay, when you divide those numbers. If you divide these two, so you do 35 divided by 55, it will give you seven over 11. And look, again, it's the same as the numbers in the ratio. So just remember, the numerator is the first number and the denominator is the second number in the ratio. On this one here, you have to be careful because if you do 24 divided by 12, it just gives you the number two. But remember, in the ratio here, we've got two numbers. So you have to remember that the number two is the same as two over one. That's why we have two to one in, in our answer there. So whenever it divides exactly, like on that one, just remember the denominator, so the second number, is always the number one. On this one, if I do 0 0.5 divided by 1.25, I get two fifths, which is the correct answer in my simplified ratio. And the same on this one, if I divide these two numbers, I get 1 over 3, which is the same as the answer here. 
okay? So if you're allowed a calculator, you might want to use that, okay? Especially if you're not that confident with your times tables, okay? And then you know you're getting it right. All right, on to the next ones. Okay, so in this top question up here, we've got three numbers in our ratio, but the method is exactly the same. You've got to try and find the highest common factor, so a number that fits exactly into these numbers and the biggest one. So in this one, the highest common factor is four. So we're going to divide all of those three numbers by the number four. So 12 divided by four is three, 16 divided by four is four, and 28 divided by 4 is 7. And that's the answer. Okay? So if you divide by 2, which is not the highest common factor, that's fine. It just means you would have to divide by 2 again afterwards. So you keep simplifying until you get your simplified version there. All right, on to the next one. This time, the units are different. When you're simplifying ratios, you have to make sure the units are the same. And remember from earlier, we don't want decimals. So I'm going to change this one into centimetres because at the same time I'll be able to get rid of this decimal number there. So remember there are 100 centimetres in a metre. So that means I need to multiply this by 100 to turn it into centimetres. And that will give me 120 centimetres. So now the ratio is both in centimetres here and over here. So we're looking for the highest common factor and then we're dividing by that highest common factor. Well, let's just pretend that I can't find the highest common factor straight away in this one. And I know that 10 is a common factor because they both end in zeros. So I could start by dividing by 10. So 120 divided by 10 is just 12 and 60 divided by 10 is 6. So here's an example of when we need to simplify again. So this time, you might be able to spot the highest common factor a bit more easily. This time, the highest common factor is 6. So you're dividing both of those numbers by the number 6. 12 divided by 6 is 2, and 6 divided by 6 is 1. There we go. So if you had spotted that 60 was the highest common factor and you divided by 60, it would take you straight to the simplified answer. But if you find a common factor but it isn't the highest common factor, don't panic, it's fine. You just keep simplifying until you get to the end. Now, just like before on this one here, we need to make sure the units are the same. So I'm going to turn them both into centimeters okay so in one centimeter we have 10 millimeters so if I want to turn this one into millimeters I must divide by 10 so that gives me 7 so now I've got 4 centimeters to 7 centimeters well I can't simplify that one so in changing this one into centimeters we've already got the simplified version to our ratio so it's just 4 to 7 you don't need to write the units in, you can just leave it like that. Now, this one down here, again, the units need to be changed. We want to try and get rid of the decimals in this number. So I'm going to change this one into meters instead of this one into kilometers. So there are 1,000 meters in one kilometer. So I need to multiply this number here by 1,000. So when I do that, I get 1, 3, 5, 0. Okay, so now that's in metres, they're both in metres. So now you're looking for the highest common factor, or just a common factor if you like to start with. So I know that 10 is a common factor, so I can divide both of these numbers by 10, okay, because they both end in a zero. So when I do that, I get 135 to 10. Now I can keep simplifying, because 5 also fits into these numbers. So now I need to simplify again and I'm going to divide by that common factor which is 5. So if I divide this number here by 5 I get 27 and if I divide 10 by 5 I get 2. So that's it, I simplified the last one. So just remember 
If you get more than two numbers, it's exactly the same method, just divide all of them by a common factor. It has to be common to all three numbers. And if you get a ratio where you have different units, you need to make sure they're all in the same units before you simplify, if you can. So there you go, simplifying ratios.